Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. You can see behind me the wind is howling, but we have very good tides. So what I'm going to be doing is it's too windy to go fishing, but I'm going to try and do a little bit of foraging on the rocks. So we'll be working our way down there all the way along. Right to the end. Straight away you can see in these rock pools here. You have the lakes up. There's all sorts. There's some sea lettuce. This one is actually called Devil's Tongue Weed. It's an unbelievable name for such a little thing. These are little sprouts of wire weed, some pom pom weed, limpets, winkles, painted top shells. And lots of little tiny gobies. All this life already, and we haven't even reached the low tide line yet. The tide is going out for another hour, hour and a half. Hopefully, by that time, we will be over there. These little areas here are fantastic. I'm trialing out a new camera setup. I'm not quite sure how the audio will be, especially with all this wind noise, so we will see. But areas like this are just teeming with life. Got your thong weeds. Now there's actually every stage of thong weed here. When it starts out, it's like little tiny bumps, and then it grows like a toadstool and then out of the toadstool grows these long thongs hence the name thongweed we have some serrated rack some red fern weeds we've got some pink healing elongated coral weed some dulls some flat fern weeds another patch of dulse there some limpets some sea lettuce there's that elongated coral weed some fronds of kelp lovely kelp fronds now this dulse this dulse is, is wide, widely edible They're eaten all over the place you can even eat kelp it's uh, high in iodine There is a couple of small furrowed crabs. That one's actually got eggs underneath it. There is a tiny edible crab and a lovely sea urchin. A couple of porcelain crabs. Oh, and another lovely little crush of star. Turn this one over while we've got it up. There are some pipe fish. Just looks like a piece of seaweed, doesn't it? There's another one. Another one there of a different colour. Some beautiful brittle stars. See that there? Oh, now that one is lovely. I don't know 
how well you can how well you can see the colours on that. It's actually a relation of the seahorse. Just looks like a piece of seaweed, doesn't it? There's some more of your young thongweed, a little bit of kelp. That almost looks like Irish moss, but it's not. I'll remember the name of that in a minute. But this is called harpoon weed. I don't know how well you can see it, but every now and again you get a couple of fronds that have got like just a spike with like loads of barbs on. Some sea lettuce. Don't wait out of the way. That almost looks like false eyelash weed. But this here, you've got some serrated rack, then some flat fern weeds. These always make me laugh. This stuff here is called bunny ears. Like rabbit ears, bunny ears. You can't really see it close enough. I'll try and get a picture to show you. But areas like this, this little cave here, if you've seen any of my foraging videos before, you keep your eye out for little caves, because that is where the crabs and lobsters will live. And if you can see at the back of there, there is a velvet swimming crab. Now they back themselves up into there, so it's just their claws facing out. So you have a difficult time getting them out. I didn't bring a hook with me today. I can't get it without, without risking getting my fingers. But well, that's what you're looking for. Living in the little caves will be where the crabs and the lobsters are hiding. There's a strawberry in enemy. Yeah. Fly by by a helicopter. Bah, they aren't half noisy. Well, this was an unexpected find. It's a spear from a spear gun. Someone must have lost it while they were out spearfishing. Just found it in this little gully. See what I mean about finding like the little caves? Put all this weed out the way. But what there is down there, and I hope you can see it, there is a big edible crab down there. See if I can get the camera down there. See it sat there in the sand.
is what we're looking for. That's a female. You can see it's a female because it has a large flap there. She's too small anyway. She's too small, so we won't put her back. You saw what I meant? Living in a little cave is where you find your crabs. Let's go and see what else we can find. Here are a couple of beautiful See the iridescent colours on them when it's in the water, look. And there is a snake lock for them. Isn't it? See a cave there. Oh, that was close. No. Nope. Right, we've got a lobster. I can see an antenna from a lobster there. That there looks interesting because you can see there's some sand turned out, but there is definitely a lobster. I can see its claws. See if I can get the camera in there for you to see. See its claws there hiding? All I could see was I could see an antenna. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to pull that rock out of the way and I'm going to see if I can get a lobster out of there. It looks like a big one as well. It does look like a very big one. <laughs> Brilliant! That's what we're for. That's what we're after. I can see him moving backwards. I hope this... I hope this tunnel doesn't, doesn't go back too far. You see it there now? Tell you what, it is a big one as well, that. Right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and get that spear that I've just found. And I'm going to try and get that lobster out of there. Put the camera in, see if you can see him. Haha, <laughs> brilliant. You can get him out of there now.
Got it. Look at the size of that. Look at the size of that lobster. <laughs> that that is what we're after. Oh, easy. There's a couple of bylaws in my area. One of them being minimum landing size. It's got to be 90 millimeters from there to there. This is probably 110 to 120. Another bylaw is you cannot land a lobster if it's carrying eggs. This is a female. She carries her eggs here. As you can see, there's no eggs. And a final bylaw is that there are no V notches in any of these tail flaps. I am absolutely over the moon with that. That is fantastic. I don't even know if it's going to fit in my bucket. Not by a long shot. I'm going to need to start bringing a bigger bucket with me. Well, that is what I call a success. I can't begin to tell you. I can't begin to tell you how happy I am. I managed to get that out of there then. Look at it, it just fits in the bucket. That's probably the biggest lobster that I've ever found on the shore. Usually you find them and they're just over the minimum size. Now, I think I have, I think I have got a tape measure in my bag. I'll give that a measure, but I'll show you, I showed you exactly where it was. You, you were winning when I found it. And all I'd done was I just found that little cave and I'd just seen one of these antennas poking out. And then you could just see its claws. It was um, it was probably meant to be that I found that spike. It was meant to be that I found this spear down there because what I had to do was I had to kind of put it in the hole and wiggle it around. And I, I wiggled it about and got it in one of the claws like that. So it bit down on one of the claws. So I made it, like, I distracted it with the spike so it, and then I put my hand around and got hold of it by its tail. But I, that is a monster. I was just checking out another little cave in there and I found two really special fish. Right, the first one is on this rock. Can you see it? It's called a sucker fish, a Cornish sucker. It's also called a cling fish because it clings to rocks. Look, there you see. It's got a suction pad on the underside of it so it can cling to a rock. And the other one is here. That is called a Tom Pot Blenny. And they were just inside that little cave there. I'm going to take a photo of this guy and then I'm going to put him back. I don't know if you can see it down at the bottom of there, but there is a big edible crab right down at the bottom. Just down there. You see it moving? Now look. That guy is just wedged. You see him down there? Just wedged in there, I can't get him out. If I'd brought my hook, I could have hooked him out. But 
<laughs> I'm not I'm not too upset. Let's keep going. There is some more of that iridescent seaweed. And I've just seen something up here. That Now in my other videos you'll have seen where I found dogfish egg. Notice the size difference there to a bulldoze. But that's a greater spot for cat shark egg. Oh there's another one. The prevailing weather has been coming this way, you can see all the seaweed everywhere. One of the benefits of that is all that turning up of the sand is it dislodges the clams. So you can see all the shells that it's depositing. And Venus clams. There's another nice one. So just scour along, looking for... the live ones. Aha! One of the things you need to be careful of when you're collecting these off the beach is they need to be tightly shut you see if they do open a slight amount the best thing you can do is knock them on a rock and if they close up tight again it means they're still alive if they're still alive it means they're good to eat if they're dead you don't know how long they've been dead for you can see there's been a lot of sand moved these rock pools wouldn't normally have sandy. What is that? There's something down there. unusual but that is the exact type of cave that you'd hope to find a crab or a lobster in oh, loads of little caves but none of them deep enough to hold anything big really like you can see that little one there you can't, maybe can't see the crab in it, but it's got a little furrowed crab in it. And there, look, you can just see a claw poking out. So you know what we're looking for. That's a better hole. Take my bag off and have a look in that. I don't know if you can see in there. But there is a velvet swimming crab right up at the top of that hole. Oh, there's a little queenie scallop. See the crabs hiding in the little holes? Oh, there's one. See it there? It's a velvet swimming crab, so I'm gonna have to be quick.
Nah, too fast for me. Yeah, look, see. There he is. Aggressive, but not very bright. That's a male. The bright blue claws and the red eyes. They're called a velvet chewing crab because they've got like a velvety texture to them and these back legs see them that it's flapping around these they're great for swimming I'm let go of that I'll try and show you ah now she's crawling off Yeah, what I did there was I put the spear in behind it and made it think there was something else on that side of the hole so it ran out this way There's another one there, look I don't know if you can see the crab up the top There is a sea slug There's an edible crab hiding in this hole. Aha! There's another one there, look. See it? Yeah, look. There it is. legs right tide's starting to flood back in now I think we're gonna head back that way as you can see tide's flooding in quite fast now it's one of the things with a really big tide the tide always goes from low to high really quickly we uh what a fantastic fantastic little walk I only got half as far as I wanted to, I only got probably in line with that big hotel there and I wanted to get all the way across but you can't grumble about what we found it was, um, I was really lucky I managed to find this spear because it helped me catch this fantastic lobster Just look at the size of it an absolute bruiser isn't she got some clams as well in there okay, go back in there now doesn't even fit in my bucket right, what I'd have done if I hadn't have found that spear all I would have done was I would have just probably gone up there into the woods and cut a switch cut a stick and got it out with a stick oh, she's um, a cracker isn't she as it is, I have got a stove and I have got a pot in the van for cooking up on the beach but that won't actually fit <laughs> in it it won't actually fit in the pot and my wife really likes lobster claws so I'm going to take this home and I'm going to cook it at home and I'm going to share it with my wife we'll uh, do a little bit of a walk up there now and if we find anything else I will show you we had a fantastic find on the shore. She's a cracker, isn't she? In fact, it was that big that we didn't even have a pan big enough to fit it in. So what we had to do was I had to call up the big guns and get a pan from my father-in-law to fit it in. It's a really simple method for cooking these. All we're gonna do is first off, you can see she's she's very much still alive put her in the freezer for 10 or 15 minutes and it puts them right to sleep so they're right in a coma so they feel absolutely nothing I think it's a much more humane way of, of dispatching them so we'll put this in the freezer and then we'll prepare the water for cooking 
You can see there, look, all I've done is I've just emptied out a drawer in the freezer. And I'll just sit her in there. The cooking process is really simple. There's no need to overcomplicate it. All we've got is we've just got, yeah. if you can get clean salt water, like clean sea water, that's perfect. If you can't, just fresh water and you just add a little bit of table salt. Now, all we're gonna do is, while the lobster's chilling, is we're going to be boiling this water. When it gets to a proper rolling boil, then you put the lobster in. When the water gets to a proper rolling boil again, you give it two more minutes. When you add the lobster, it will lower the temperature of the water and it will cook as the water heats back up again. So the larger the lobster, the longer it will take, so the longer it will cook for. Right, you can see this pan now is at a proper rolling, bubbling boil. That is how hot you want your water. It's taken 10 minutes to get to the boil. The lobster now has been in there for probably 15 minutes. That'll be about the right amount of time. You don't want to leave it too long so it's frozen. It just wants to be chilled so it's out. We'll go and get the lobster and then we'll introduce it to the pan. Then like I say, when it gets to a full rolling boil again, two more minutes after that, and then you take it straight out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the sink full of cold water and tip a bag of ice in there as well. So you plunge it straight into ice water, which stops the cooking process. If you left it on the side and it was still hot, it would overcook and it would go really rubbery. So that's what we're going to do. You can see there, look, she's, she's well out. You can see the cold, cold steam coming off her. So we'll just straight into the pan. There's a proper rolling boil now. So two more minutes after that, she's ready to come out. That's two more minutes after the rolling boil. So we'll have that off. Take this over there. You can see there, we've just got cold water, but with some ice in there to help it. I think I'm going to have a job picking her up, she's that big. Can I help? Yeah, let her uh, cool off in there for five, ten minutes. I feel she's still holding a little bit of heat. But in the meantime, We'll butter some bread, cut some lemon, and get some plates. And there we are. I don't even know what you would pay for that in a restaurant, but I can tell you it wouldn't come cheap. It's absolutely as fresh as it gets. I mean, you saw me find it on the rocks. Just cooked in a really, really simple way. It tastes absolutely delicious. We just like it with a bit of buttered bread and a little squirt of lemon. We're actually a perfect match because I prefer the tail and my wife prefers the claws. So between us, we'll, we'll finish this off, no problem. Let's go and get stuck in.